Good evening, everyone. Welcome a little late to TSSR Weekly here at Sports Corner at 124. I'm Dwayne Hewlett. Kenny Suter is alongside. We're in a different location yet again yeah. within the Sports Corner at 124. We have Jalen Conley, the TSSR Bites Athlete of the Week, going to be on the show with us in a little bit. And, and Kenny, it's a different night this week, a different location. It's Christmas time. It's the end of the school year for the college kids, i.e. you. Uh, a lot of stuff going on. That's why we switched nights because of the tournaments that are going on and some of the games getting played in between the tournaments. So, so we're here on a Thursday instead of a Wednesday like normal. But uh, a lot of good basketball yet to be played, a lot of good tournament basketball coming over the Christmas break. Yeah, especially you'll have as much as we can over there at Men and Unity when we can get there. A lot of tournament basketball. It's a week away from Christmas Eve, which still seems so weird when I hear that <laughs> but you're just gonna have a bunch of slow time right quick and then it's gonna kick right back up in about two weeks yeah it's amazing how time flies when you're having fun right and that's kind of where we're <laughs> it's kind of where we're at and but then then we get into the real season right the mm-hmm. the, the regular season for basketball and, and we've been in a regular season but we're in a conference season after the Christmas tournaments and that's when everybody wants to be playing their best we've he- heard so many coaches say in our post game interviews that they want to be playing their best ball when conference season starts. They want to test themselves early. The Macomb Western Holiday Tournament's coming up. That's going to be a test. The uh, MVIT that Kenny talked about in Minden is going to be a test for BPC. Jalen Conley coming in here as our Athlete of the Week, and you've been seeing most of those games for BPC. BPC, I think, is questioning or surprising a lot of people. They're a really good team. You know, when you look at – they lost a couple of players graduating last year. Players that are playing up for them, especially players like Tanner Kleinetz, have grown immensely in just one year, you know, physically and in skills-wise. Uh, they're a very tall team. They love to run up and down the court. That's what Coach Snyder, when I asked him afterwards, I like, a couple of good wins, you know, a couple by 30 or more. And he said the big thing that they really got to focus on is being have their head on a swivel at every moment because you can't get into a lull of, all right, we're, we're winning. All right, we're winners. You can't get into that kind of lull, especially coming into tournament time. Yeah, you know, I think people kind of forget. We've got some good basketball teams. I don't know whether people really expected to have as the good teams that we've had. McCombs playing, I think, better than people maybe anticipated. They're missing a couple players. Those guys get back. They're going to be even better. But they're, they've lost one game since the BPC tournament. So I think they're 9-2. and two. Mm-hmm. Uh, they won five in a row, lost one, and I think they've won four in a row since then. They've really tested themselves. BPC's won nine in a row since the Spartan Tip-Off Classic. They're undefeated since then. They're 11-2. and two. And then you have Southeastern with Danny Stevens, who's doing what Danny Stevens does. He's doing Danny Stevens things, and he's leading Southeastern to the number one ranking in Class 1A. So, I mean, there's and, – and Southeastern is on – you know, we cover Southeastern. They don't have a ton of home games, kind of like West Prairie. They don't have a ton of home games, but they play Macomb. They play Bushnell. They play West Prairie. So we'll see them quite a bit down the stretch here. So you'll get to see Danny Stevens, and you're going to see why. In fact, I'm kind of surprised that he's a walk-on at Missouri. He signed a national letter of intent to be a preferred walk-on at Missouri. I think he's legit enough to play at Missouri. I think he's going to get some playing time. I don't think he's going to be the average preferred walk-on that we see probably so, not i personally i haven't seen him yeah, you haven't got to see him yet have you no i i've been pretty much stuck in the same lanes of filling in whatever holes we have but a lot of bushnell girls and boys which is helping me out not have to drive as much for western once now that western is done for the semester that's when the game stops surprisingly <laughs> can't give me a break or anything like that no nope, <laughs> you'll uh, you'll get to take a little break but not a, not a lot and then uh, you know, there's a lot of stuff going on, but it's funny. You know, I started looking at the schedule, and we pulled the schedule up, and we play a lot of games. Like, we're busy most nights, but we don't have as many nights uh, mm-hmm. constant, if that makes any sense. Do you know what I mean? We, we don't have four games a night or three yeah. games a night anymore. We're down to two. Sometimes we'll have three, but it's two games a night, but they're almost every night. Every night. Once we get into the conference season. So that's, that's nice not only for us, but it's nice for the viewers as well. Luke Little has come on. Who I kept calling Kyle for some reason. I have no idea why I kept calling him Kyle. But Luke Little uh, has come on. 
Grant Hicks has come on. Grant's running the camera. Luke has been talking a little, running the camera. He's going to hopefully, as we can expand a little more into West Hancock, he's he's a West Hancockite. Mm-hmm. So he'll do some West Hancock games when we can fit him in, and he'll fill in for us at other places when we can do that. Of course, John Burton is still around. Uh, John Reynolds is going to take a more active role, I think, in doing some play-by-play in the spring so or in the winter. Not in the spring, of course. He'll be playing baseball in the spring. But So we've got a lot of good things happening here at TSSR Game Time Live, which is TSSR Weekly here tonight. So a lot of fun stuff coming, but... We're going to take our first break of the night. We'll get Jalen Conley on here. We'll talk to Jalen about what's going on at BPC. He's kind of the spark plug for that BPC team, I think, wouldn't you say? The main point, man, you know, he's always looking for steals, getting a bunch of uh, fast break points, just getting pretty much offensively and defensively the main driver for them. You know, you've got players around him that are great shooters. Shooting is a great point of the BPC team, three-point shooters all around they're all tall. Conley, however, is the one that they think, okay, well, here's Dalton Yoakum, and i got to look at Dalton St- Strode, and I'm looking at Tanner Kleindance and all these kids that are, you know, almost a foot taller than me. And then you see Jalen, who is about my size. Okay, well, then I'll focus on these tall guys, and he's, he's picked your pocket and got ten steals already. Yeah, he's, he's playing pretty well. We've seen him do that on numerous occasions this year. So we'll take our first break here on TSSR Weekly, live from Sports Corner at 124, and we'll come back with Jalen Conley in just about 60 seconds. I went through MDH when we were trying to get pregnant. We were struggling the first year, and then when we got pregnant, I stayed at MDH and through labor and now for pediatrics. My experience was nothing short of phenomenal. I was met with amazing staff members who helped me through concerns that I had when she was first born, helping me learn how to be a new mom. It was really reassuring and comforting knowing that I had so much support and kindness around me. My entire pregnancy at MDH was amazing. At Western Illinois University, Leathernecks don't just blend in. Our purple stands out. Our students are innovative, creative, and resilient. At WIU, there is limitless potential with campuses in Macomb, the Quad Cities, and online. Visit wiu.edu slash potential to become a Leatherneck and get an education that stands out. And welcome back to Sports Corner at 124. I'm Dwayne Hewlett. Jalen Conley is joining us now, the Tri-State Sports Report Bites Athlete of the Week. And Jalen, uh, you guys I think catching some people by surprise a little bit at BPC. Uh, I don't know what they expected out of you. I thought you guys would be okay. I think you're a little better than okay. I agree. <laughs> What's this season been like for you guys so far? You're on a nine-game winning streak, if my count's right. So uh, I think that people saw that you could be decent at the at the tip-off classic, but you put a pretty good string together here. Um, we have hard work at practice. Snyder make us – you tell us every day we have something special, and we just put in work every day at practice, nonstop. We run hard. We run a floor hard in games, and it's paying off. You, uh, oddly enough, I mean, you're not short, really, but you're probably <laughs> one of the shorter kids on the team. I yes. mean, you got some height this year at BPC. Yes. Does that make your job a little easier as the point guard? So, the, the, I mean, or does it hinder you? Or, I mean, what's that do for you? Um. It, it helps me. It helps everyone, to be honest. Um, I try to pass the ball as much as I could. Um, I create for others, first off. And like Snyder said, that's what a point guard has to do at my size and my height. Well, you're averaging 13 points a game, three rebounds, three assists at last check. So that's not too not too bad. I think talking to Kenny and seeing the games I've seen, you pride yourself in your defensive intensity a little bit. Yes. I think that turned those 13 points a game, probably six or eight of those are fast breaks, right? Agreed. <laughs> yes. So. I love defense. Um, one of my idols uh, for playing defense will be Sincere Harris from Illinois. They call him Mr. 90 Feet. And I agree. Playing defense leads to offense, and that's how you win games. Now, you sent a game into overtime this year. Yes. With a with a, a steal at half court, and you went down and got a layup. My, I talked to some people after that. And I said that got to be one of the hardest layups anybody can ever make. What when you got the steal was? Were you thinking anything between the point that you got control of the ball and put the layup up? What were you thinking? Then? I was like, hopefully I don't miss this. We're going to be <laughs> doing a lot of layups at practice. Um, but. 
I I told Coach Snyder, I said, hey, Coach, I'm, this is our game. And it didn't go as it was planned. But when I got the lay, when I got the steal, I was I was I was I was proud of myself and proud of the way that Carter was playing defense on the other side of the floor and pressing him. So I just came up and took the ball and I was like, I got to make this happen, and I did. Yeah, we talk about your defense, but I think as a whole, the team has been playing pretty good defense, right? And yes. And when everybody on the floor is playing good defense, a guy that really likes defense, it becomes a little easier for him. Yes, um, defense is kind of tiring, but like I said, Snyder make us work every day on defense at practice especially our favorite defense defense this year probably be the one two two it stops teams that really wants to like push the pace but yes i i appreciate that that defense and that style now a lot of times when a small school because bpc for lack is a pretty small school when a small school has height in years past especially that it's been for lack of a better term unathletic height Mm -hmm. meaning they can't really jump they're just big boys that are kind of tall and they take up space that I don't think there's really anybody that matches that category. Braden Barker maybe a little because he's the biggest kid on the team, yeah, but he's, he's not he's strong. not that kind of big either, really. I mean, yeah. your height is really athletic for the size of school that you guys have are from. I agree. Um, we, we have a lot of tall people on our team, and our average height probably is about 6'2". And how tall are you? 5'10 and a half. <laughs> I like how you add that. When you, when, you, <laughs> when you play with a bunch of guys that are 6'4", 6'5", you have to get every half yes, inch you can get, I ha- right? I have to. I have to. Uh. <laughs> so you play football in the fall, basketball. You yes. play. You don't play baseball, do you? No. You run I, track? No, but I on off-season work, I try to get better at basketball since I want to go to college for basketball. and just Hopefully I pick up something really nice. Okay. Have you, are you, have you talked to anybody? Yes. Um, right now, I got like interest right now. Um, hopefully, if it come back, if it comes back nice, it's, yeah, you'll see. <laughs> All right. Well, that's that's what we like to hear. So, we covered a lot of eight man football. Yes. And BPC, I know you guys didn't have the record that you wanted, but we were talking about before we came on. You guys played. The, all four teams in the final four, you, like eight of your nine teams were in the playoffs. Maybe all nine of them. I can't remember for sure now, off the top of my head. You guys didn't win a ton of games, but you played some really tough competition. I, I, I like tough people. It makes just not the team better, but it makes everyone around you better as well. So as you look back to your three losses this year, you guys are, I think, I think 11 and 3, if my memory serves me correctly. What's – you probably feel like that West Hancock game, you know, that's one you really want back. Yes. Uh Macomb ended up being a big loss, a big point loss, but it was close throughout. That's a game that you probably are looking forward to a rematch into, isn't it? Yes, I agree. Um, the West Hancock game, I feel like we could have executed a little better and just listened to uh, Snyder's plans and his the way of his game that he liked us to play. Um, the Macomb game, it was kind of we we're kind of upset because Hancock beat Macomb in a tournament, and we we're kind of shocked. Like, hey, they came out of play, and we felt like we could stick with them since we're right there with West Hancock. But time, I mean, time would like change, and it, it happened. So now at practice, we talk about that, but we just like let it go, and you'll see pretty good basketball from us here soon. So this United tournament is, is a different kind of tournament, right? It's yes. kind of really spread out it's over a week or a week and a half and you're going up making a lot of trips and you're doing a lot of different stuff but you play for a championship in that tournament tomorrow night midwest central right yes so what seeing all the you've seen it you've seen several teams more than once but you've seen a lot of different teams in these 14 games you've had so far Mm -hmm. how do you think that prepares you going into the conference season which starts after the mvit um i just I feel like it's a good thing. We get to see different styles of basketball from our own basketball, as Snyder puts out. Um, Like I said, we have to just execute, work harder, and just keep grinding from now. So what's the – what? I know you like defense, but what part of your game do you think is the best and what part do you think you need to work the most on? Uh, I need to work on more of shooting. Um, My my shooting percentage has went down a lot. Uh, 
And then probably my second one that I like about my game is the way I can get to the basket and open up the floor for everyone. I'm a floor general. So you, you're you a kind of guy that can drive the hoop a little bit and then kick out, right? Yes. Um, you've got some guys that can shoot the tray, which that makes that a little more effective too, right? When yes. You can, it, not only does it make your pass more effective, you can get some assists from behind the three-point line, which is always nice, mm -hmm. but it probably opens the lane up for you a it little does. more too because they have to protect the three a little bit more. I agree. Um, some knockdown shooters on our team will be like Dolan Strode, for instance. Yeah. Uh, it's my guy. Um, he had some big news today, didn't he? Yes. He just he committed to a, a Juco in uh, Joliet, so that's pretty nice. I told him congratulations. But, yes, yeah, Strode, Ezra, everyone on the team can shoot the ball. And we, and my coach Snyder preached that every day. We got to have our feet set because, like Snyder tells him, I like to drive and I like to kick out. I like to get everyone involved, and that's what I do. And I, I enjoy having a team like that. Tanner Kleindance has got some ups too, doesn't he? <laughs> yes. I agree. Now, I want to ask. I want to ask your opinion because I, I I've seen two of his. I don't know how many dunks he's had now, but I've seen two of them. Is that all he's had? Do you know? No, uh, actually, on when wait uh, Monday night I threw him a. Did you throw him a noob? I threw him an alley oop and he dunked the ball. No kidding. <laughs> it was pretty sweet. He had the whole okay. crowd going crazy. It was nice. Okay, so here are two things about Tanner Kleindens. First one is you saw the first two. Mm -hmm. I, I think they were goaltending. I think they're goaltending. Do you think? Do you, I, I, th I mean, he's way up there. Don't get me wrong, mm -hmm. but he's so stinking athletic. He just gets up there so fast. I don't think they. I thought the ball was still in the rim. <laughs> do you think the ball was still in the rim? No. 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 You're just saying that because no. he's your teammate. No, but he, he's a he's progressing like just athleticism. Uh, and like Snyder preach, if we can get him in a gym, get a little muscle, he's going to be scary next year. Well, and that's what Kenny said is uh, of all the kids on your team that have grown the most mm -hmm. physically and skill-wise, he's got to be one of those kids, yes. right? Yes. Also, uh, another kid that grew a lot, like everyone preaches, Dalton Huffman, he's a he's a hard worker. You got Brayden Barker, he'll get out there, set some picks, grab some rebounds. He's aggressive. Um, even Nate Kramer, yeah. he get in the game. You might foul, well, but you know Nate Kramer is the Kenny Suter of of BPC yes, now. I Suter agree. <laughs> Suter Suter was the guy that go out there and play two minutes and foul five times. That's kind of what yeah. Nate Kramer is, right? But yeah, he's going to make sure he's in the scorebook. I agree, and he's aggressive. Um, I mean, he's a good kid. Don't, I'm just yeah. I'm just giving Nate hard. He, he tries real hard though, <laughs> real real hard at, at, at the expense of the other team a lot of times. Anyway, right. go ahead. Um, Kane Palm, he's improved a lot. He can I'll, shoot the rock, too. Can yes, he, he could. Um, it's not a preach. Every time he go for a layup, just try to dunk on somebody. Make the crowd feel like they're involved and not just watching basketball. Um, and my favorite one that I will say that improved a lot that I have seen would probably be Don Strode. He improved a lot. Like, the kid, he preaches, oh, I can't shoot, I can't do this. But Snyder put the faith in him and was like, hey, Strode, you can do this, man. And he get out on the floor and he makes some big threes. Yeah, and I think that's – I think as a whole, that your whole team yeah. – I mean, we're picking out guys who's improved the most or whatever, but I think as a team across the board, every player across the board oh, has yeah. stepped their game up. They have. They have. Um, like I was saying, when we were picking out players, uh, even Sean Link, man. He yeah, Sean came, scored like nine the He scored night, nine yeah. points in literally two minutes. That's impressive. That, that is impressive. That's impressive. It doesn't matter who you're playing against. No, nine points matter. in two minutes is pretty that's difficult. That's impressive. That is impressive. Yes. So, uh, let's go back to Dalton Huffman. Does he have a nose for the basketball and work as hard in practice as he does in the game? Because he, he he's does. all over the he place does. around the basket. I can say one thing. That kid, when it's time to sprint, he's the first one down and back. Um, he's he's athletic, man. I got to give it to him. Like I don't know what work he put in at home, but he's athletic, and he does have a nose for the ball. He's in the right position at every given moment. Now, he's not a whole lot taller than you are, is he? No, he's like 5'11". Five, five <laughs> is he 5'11 and a half? Yeah, or about 5'11 and a half. You're taking his half away yeah, from I'm him. taking his half away. You're taking half. I see how it is. I see how it is. Uh, so he just gets down there and mixes it up with the big guys, and he just has no fear about getting in position and, and, and doing anything. People don't expect him to be like a post player, but his whole life of me watching him so far, he's played none but post and – he can do some amazing things. He rebound the ball. He hustle for the ball. 
and he made sure he get dirty. I he's like, like it. He's like Dennis Rodman of he BPC. Is. He is. Uh, Minus the hair and the earrings <laughs> and stuff like that. He finds a way every time to just, like, do some crazy things. And he can even put you back in the game. It's so, crazy. as you guys have progressed this year, we were talking over there, and I said, you probably feel like a game or two got away. And you said, I feel like every game got away. It has. You said you feel like you should be 14-0. and 0. Yes. That mindset, I think a lot of your kids on your team have that mindset now. Obviously, winning does that. But how much does Coach Snyder have to do with that mindset that you guys have <clears throat> got going on at BPC now? Um, Coach Snyder, like I said, he does amazing things. Like, uh, he pushes us hard in practice. He makes sure, like, even after games, we clean up someone else's gym, like United, for instance. After we got done with the game, we shook hands. He let us go in the locker room for about 30 seconds, talk to us, and tell us, hey, you know what time And as you get out there, you pick up the gym for people. And it's, like he said, it's just not about basketball. It's about the, your community and what you surround yourself around and just being humble. Well, speaking of community, you you played a pretty big role in your principal driving an hour with a whole lot of syrup on it. <laughs> yes. Uh, we broadcast a pancake stacking slash throwing slash <laughs> slapping of uh, Mr. Butcher. Uh, tell us a little bit about how that came about. Um, so in my psychology class, uh, we're doing a mental awareness type of thing for people like with diseases. Like for me, instance, I did Bell palsy, and we're just doing a project on that. And I was like, hey, is Reed, uh, I see someone in the community who needs help. And she was like, what do you want to do? I was like, can we change my proposal? She was like, yeah, you can change it. So I was like, hey, can we do it for the single two family? And she was like, most definitely. So I took it upon my hand with my proposal, which is the, the syrup and pancake. And I was like, hey, this kid needs help. So like in a video, it shows that he was the first one since it was for his family. And I told Edward, I was like, I appreciate this for letting us do this and his mom or whatever. And from that, I just realized that like, like I was saying earlier, it's not about basketball. It's about the community and want to help others that need to help. And so I did that. And a small community, you, I mean, he's not a basketball player, but no. you guys know almost everybody in the school, yes. right? So when one person in the school has a problem, you all pretty much know about it, don't yes, you? Yes, we all try to help each other out. It's not, it's not just the basketball team or the football team. I think it's everyone in Bush and Prairie City School. So – you're talking about wanting to be able to extend your career and play at a college level, yes. and you've got some chances to do that. I feel like listening to you talk that coaching might be somewhere down the line for you too. Do you, do you like <laughs> yeah, that idea? I do. I, I I think about that a lot. Like I want to help other people, like where I came from. Um, I just like I said, helping the community, and I feel like I can make some of the players like in Bushnell, hopefully. If it goes well and I graduate from college, I want to come back to Bushnell. I actually coach from Bushnell. I do. So what is it about Bushnell that, that you like? Um, I like it's a small school. Everyone knows each other. Um, I like where, like, everyone, as everyone knows you, you can – people can see, like, the effort that you put in and the work that you put in, and I like that. And I like the way the teachers, like, communicate with their students. I do. So are you going to be – do you want to be a teacher or do you want to be a coach? What what do you uh, what do you what's your plan? I want to there? be an influencer. An influencer. So you want to be on social media? Yeah. That type of, of an influencer? Um, I just want to speak my mind to people. You want to speak your mind? You, well, here's your here's your platform. <laughs> what what's yeah. what's the first thing you want to do to speak your mind? What what do you want to talk about today? Um I'm putting you on the spot. A, 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 I would love a, to an influencer should be able to rattle something off their head. Is that quick? Yeah, I would love to talk about basketball man I like it's that it, time of year isn't it? yes it's that time of year and i feel like coaches and players should put in that work right now okay so let's take bushnell off the table okay. do you want to talk about basketball let's talk about basketball for a minute all right take bushnell off the table <laughs> okay we're going to put your influencer hat on okay who is who is the best team that you've played so far Best team I've played so far. I got to give it to Macomb. They're not bad, are they? No. I got to give it to Macomb. But me personally, like overall that I have played is West Hancock. They're a smart basketball team. They pass the ball. They have less turnovers, and they know where to be. There's something to be said about that, right? I mean, 
you don't have to be the best athlete Mm-mm. to be the best team, right? You no. don't have to have the best athletes to be the best team. Agreed. And West Hancock maybe don't have the best athletes. Maybe they don't have as good athletes as BPC or Macomb, but maybe as a team and how they play together on on the regular, meaning every time they come out pretty much, mm-hmm. they play as almost the, the most co- cohesive unit you're going to see. Yes, I agree. They got some amazing basketball players, man, like – I will never forget uh, I think Luke Jacko. Um, yeah. I was grabbing a rebound, and I remember him, like, I'm looking at him, I'm like, he's not a basketball player. But he got up there, grabbed the rebound, squares the ball, and passed it. And it wasn't, like, no like no slow pass. Like, he threw it exactly at the person. I'm like, this team is very good. Yeah, fundamentals go a long way. Fundamentals, ways, yes, and I agree. Uh, Coach Schneider, I know, talks about fundamentals a lot. All the time. Um as you've progressed in basketball, and I mean, so many times now when kids start playing any sport, it's like, I want to score or I want to do this. I, I've told people for years, if you, if you do things, if you learn fundamentals as a little kid, you're going, you. you're going to score more points your They'll whole life you. than you ever would have scored by just trying to be a scorer. Yes, I agree. Um, because – you see these teams, volleyball is one that really steps out, and, and, and basketball is the same way. When you can get a coach that focuses on fundamentals, you don't have to have the, just like at West Ham, you don't have to have the best athletes. No. But if they do basketball things like basketball players, they're going to beat the athlete that doesn't do basketball things like a basketball player. I agree. Player. I agree. And uh, like Dol Huffman, like yeah. I said, I preached. Uh, he's he's an athlete and. He's fundamental. He know where to be, and he's going to be good. And I think that's the thing. Macomb has been playing really well lately, too, yes. kind of like you guys. And I think that's the thing you're seeing out of Macomb now is you got Nolan Kerr and J.T. Jeter. J.T. Jeter's back. Those guys and, and, and Jack Duncan, who isn't necessarily a, a basketball, basketball player, player, but he understands, right? He's yes. athletic and he understands. And Nolan Kerr, who maybe isn't the best athlete on the team, but – He's stepping up, kind of like mm-hmm. he's using his fundamentals now, and now he feels like he can do things. That's exactly, I think, what you're talking about, right? You, yes. you gotta, you've got to learn those base fundamentals, and then a lot of stuff's going to come to you. I agree. They will follow, to, they will follow you in any sport you play. Well, uh, let's go back to the pancake thing. How much <laughs> convincing did it take to get <clears throat> Mr. Butcher to do that? Not very much. Uh, we measure his head with Skylar Shannon's hand. You measured. You measured. We wait me- a second. You measured his hand or his head with Skylar Shannon's yeah, hand. Yeah. And we said, "Why we, on earth did you do that?" We just had to pick out the right size of the pancake, so we just met, we put her hand on his head. You know, it was very shiny, <laughs> so we put it on his head, and we we're like, "Hey, that's a perfect size." So, 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 is that is his head shiny because his hair is like silver, or is he bald? I know the answer, but I just thought I'd make He's you bald. say He's bald. He's bald, yeah. <laughs> don't oh. give me a detention for this if you're watching this. <laughs> Please don't. No detentions. This is after school hours. Yes. <laughs> uh, he was a good sport. I, I might add, he put plastic or he put trash bags in his car. You guys scooted him out of the gym mm-hmm. literally on towels and bags, and he drove <laughs> home. He is. It, with covered in syrup. <laughs> And he lives in, like, Vermont or Astoria or something like yeah. that, right? He drove all the way home like that. I mean, what's that What's that do for you kids seeing a, a, an administrator willing to do that kind of stuff? That shows pride and the love for your school and your community. There's a lot of kids had a little fun that day, too. Oh, yeah, they? I agree. Now, I, I agree. I, I was sitting there watching. Now, you, you hoped to stack a bunch of pancakes on his head. Yes. Elizabeth Souter. I th- I feel like got a little carried away with the, the syrup? with the syrup. <laughs> do, do you not agree? I I agree, but at the same time, I thought it was pretty funny. Could, 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 I think that I think that pancake stacking is a sport. Yeah. I uh, don't you think? Yes. Our goal was to try to beat the record, which was three feet, three and a half, I think. Three and a half yes. feet. That's a lot of pancakes. That is. I mean, if you figure like a quarter to a half inch of pancake, that's like. Yeah. That's a lot of pancakes. That is. So. I think we should try to do it again. I think so too. You think? I think we could. We should I do some fundraiser and try to get it. Try to do it again, with I the do. idea of just stacking pancakes being the. All righty. The purpose. Gotta talk to Mr. Butcher again. We we uh, 
less syrup, more pancakes. Less syrup, more pancakes. I will make sure I let Elizabeth Suter know that yeah. tomorrow at school. Yeah, you tell her that. <laughs> tell her we decided less syrup, more pancakes, and we need to have another fundraiser and try to break just a world record breaking fundraiser. All righty. We could figure it. We got to figure out what we're going to do it for, and we've got to figure out if it will get donations. Mm hmm. Or they can pledge pancakes. They can pledge. You know, they like you used to do the free throw shoot-a-thon. Yeah, we we're supposed to do that uh, actually Tuesday. So the shoot-a-thon, you know, you you, ple- you pledge per shoot per free throw made. Mm-hmm. We could do pledge per pancake stacked. All righty, that sounds good. What do you think? I'm down for the challenge. I think we need to we need to figure it out. I'm down for the challenge. Okay, we'll talk about it. So we're gonna take another break. Thanks, Jalen Conley, for coming and talking to us. Congratulations sure. on it great start to the year because it's really just getting started yes maybe you can come away with a united tournament champion you got an mvit possibility championship next week and then go rolling into some conference play and it's been a while since they've had a conference championship that'd be nice huh yeah i hopefully we get it um we just got to keep putting in the work and like coach snyder said something special so our tri-state sports report athlete of the week jalen conley We'll be back right after this on TSSR Weekly. I chose the MDH OBGYN group uh, because I've heard wonderful things about Dr. Smith. Um, and upon entering the office, I, I really got along with everybody and got a warm feeling. The staff is warm and inviting and welcoming. It's a small community, so it's a really nice uh, hospital to have here in the rural area. I continue to choose MDH because of the relationships I have. I really enjoy everybody here. MTC Communications is building a high-speed fiber network in our community, and we're putting priority on the areas with the greatest interest. That means we need your input to let us know you want us to build fiber in your area first. Experience the speed and convenience of fiber internet by visiting our special website and registering. Let us know you want fiber internet today and make your voice heard. It was the community that really drew me back to Macomb. I'm from a small community uh, and I'm from a farm family and ultimately I always wanted to practice in a place like that and I felt that I had uh, the ability to connect to people who with a similar background from me and the fact that the staff members at the hospital and the support, every, all the support staff at the hospital was also focused with the goal of patient care, it felt like it just all came hammered at home for me. And welcome back to TSSR Weekly. Dwayne Hewlett, Kenny Suter back, and a good interview with Jalen Conley, who said he had to leave to do some final work. you know anything about that? Oh, I wouldn't know anything about finals. The four that I had plus the test that was all due Wednesday. All before Wednesday? Or all, all Wednesday or before? All due on Wednesday. So oh, I had woke up at 6 o'clock in the morning to start doing ho- the paper that I didn't know was due on that day. Normally he he told us differently than what he put up for his uh, uh, online that, That's a date. typical college kid. Tip- a, typical, typical college kid. Oh, he didn't tell us. Well, he, he did tell us. It's written in one spot in two different wa- in two different dates, and he said, oh, well, I used that one from last year. And I go, <laughs> well, thanks for telling us. <laughs> that's not important. Yeah. You, know, you got time. That, <laughs> did you get it done? I, I did get it done. Did you pass? I assume so. <laughs> that's, that's, that's never good. I assume so. Uh, let's talk about some sports, I guess. Uh, Liberty and Macomb tomorrow night. I'll be on the call with that. Grant Hicks will be running the camera. Oddly enough, that's a varsity-only game because of numbers and illness. It's going to be a varsity-only game. I never remember, even during COVID year, we didn't have this many games no. being affected by sickness. Not at all. It's been kind of crazy. That's the thing. Is every, every time I look down now, instead of going down to check to make sure, hey, who's got the night, not right numbers, how to say their names, I'm looking down. It's like, all right, how many of your kids are gone? Because <laughs> every single time it's at least three or four, not here, not here, not here. Yeah, it's uh, it's been kind of crazy, and, and and that's helped. That's hurt us in scheduling also. So tomorrow night is a six o'clock varsity only game at Macomb High against Liberty. Liberty, a state champ or state tournament. Uh, qualifier last year in 1A, so should be a good basketball game, but a varsity only at 6 o'clock, which is 
uh, kind of surprising because I'll tell you what, folks, Macomb is good varsity-wise this year. They've got some pretty good JV players as well. They're going to be good for a few years to come. Braden Holdhouse and Drew Watson are legit players as well. So they're going to be they're going to be good for the next little bit. Big day on Saturday for us here on TSSR Game Time Live presented by MDH as we have the Great Western Shootout live from Abington Avon High School all day long. First game starts at 9 o'clock. Last one starts at 7.30 p.m. How many of those games are you going to come up and help me with? Uh, I wasn't on my schedule. I work at Hearts that day. <laughs> you told me you were going to come do a game. I can. You're killing me. <laughs> You're killing me. Don't do that to me. You're going to give me a heart attack. <laughs> you did come. What, you came and did one audio and one video game last, last year. year, didn't yep. you? Yeah, so some really good games, though, at uh, at this tournament. Some teams that if you want to come watch some basketball of teams you don't normally get to see, that's the tournament to do it. Mm -hmm. The games the games start at 9 a.m. with Ridgewood and Monmouth Roseville. Of course, those are teams that we kind of see throughout the year in our area. Then Weathersfield and Farmington, again, a couple games you kind of – teams you see. Then we – game three at noon is when to get teams that kind of start traveling in that we don't see very often. Knoxville, you know, a normal for us, Sarah plays Sarah Gordo Bements, who was pretty decent last they were la year. There last year. Because yeah, I looked down and I went, okay, how do you say that? Where is <laughs> yeah. that from? <laughs> yeah, so uh, that'll be – that should be a pretty good game if you want to come watch. And that starts at noon on Saturday at the Great Western Shootout at Abington Avon High School. Then the 130 game is Rock Ridge, a team that's at the old Olympic Conference, Rock Ridge, and Columbia. So that's another team, Columbia team, we never see in this area. They're making the trip down for this one game. And then number, Class 1A's number one ranked Southeastern Suns, who we've only got to see once this year mm -hmm. on TSSR Game Time Live. We'll get to see them against Fulton, Another team not too far away, but we just don't ever get to see Fulton very often. And then Macomb, who, if they win against Liberty tomorrow night, will be riding a five-game winning streak again, I believe, or a four-game winning streak again. Plays Scales Mound, who was another Class A qualifier for state last year. So, you know, Macomb – a team we don't really see around here much. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, we don't see we don't see a whole lot of Macomb. Just every home game and and uh, a whole lot actually. But uh, which is good, you know. I mean, it's cool to see these these teams that we see a lot play teams, play teams that we never see. And you have no idea how they're going to react to teams that you know the coaches will have some film on and they'll kind of know a little bit. But first quarter, nobody has any clue what's going to happen. For sure, that's right. Now, the cool thing you're going to see about Scales Mound, if you watch Macomb Scales Mound, either in person or on TSSR Game Time Live, the thing you're going to see is that Scales Mound plays a 1-3-1, or at least they did, and I expect that they will this year again, and a good 1-3-1. And if you play a team that plays 1-3-1, Illini Bluffs plays 1-3-1 really pretty well. When you're playing a 1-3-1 and it's good, it's a really hard defense to, to, to deal with. Uh, if you got a good fast guy in the baseline, you got a big guy on top that can run the floor a little bit and can harass the people trying to handle the ball out top, you're going to have some problems. And that's what uh, Illini Bluffs offers, and I, I would expect you'll see similar out of scale mounds, scales mound. Then the only girls game of the night starts at 6 p.m., that's another Macomb game, but it's A-Town against Macomb. Girls action, A-Town. Their boys' team is struggling a little bit this year, but the girls' team at A-Town really is, is legit. Really, really good. You've seen them once already, mm -hmm. right? Twice. Twice, that's right, yeah. So they, they bring a lot to the table. Exactly. Uh, down low, great post play by Brooke Peeper. And around, they got some good guards to help out, like um, Emmerich and uh, Gunther. Yeah, uh, Peeper is going to be an athlete of the week mm -hmm. for, for Tri-State Sports Report Bites. There's no doubt about that. She's had a bunch of points on several occasions this year. She's going to end up being an athlete of the week as we get into conference season, most definitely. She's that kind of a player for A-Town. And uh, Macomb doesn't have that height, right? That's that's where Peeper is. You know, she's, she set a school record for rebounds in a game the other day. She's going to – be able probably to dominate down low, but the bombers bring or the lady bombers bring some shooting, some speed that maybe they can, you know, counteract that a little bit. So it'll be interesting to see how the lady bombers answer that because they have been improving throughout the year too. 
So that's always a fun game to watch. And if the game plan, like, if the Bombers can get anybody on that A-Town team into foul trouble, that'll very hurt them. They do have some good substitutions, players coming off the bench, but they only rotate three, maybe four in max. There are a lot of starter-heavy te team, kind of like the BBC uh, girls are as well. If you get one of those players into foul trouble, especially Peeper or uh, Hunter on the wing, it's going to be a real challenge for A-Town to kind of come back from that. Yeah, so you want to start pounding at the big at the big girl, right? The tall girl trying to get her out of the game and trying to keep her out of her rhythm. So Macomb boys did a very good job of that against Illini or Illini Bluffs, right? They did that with the with Alvy, who they just dominated defensively and just didn't let him do anything. Probably that same kind of concept. You're going to go down there, harass her, hit her, be on her, touch her, push her all the time, see if you can get her out of her game. You always have to have, you know, down low, playing post against somebody that's taller than you, bigger than you, stronger than you. You always have to have a hand on them somewhere like that so that instantly a ball goes up, go right for a box out. That's exactly how, you know, when you're playing post and you're out size like every time I was out on the court. Box no, outs. Oh, you weren't. <laughs> sized this way, not this way. Well, I was outsized. Well, back <laughs> then I was outsized both ways, but now I'm just outsized this way. I, I pretty much got everybody covered the other way anymore, it seems but, like. Uh, but. You know, they're, they're going to out-rebound you if the ball goes up just because the height advantage. If you're able to get in, box out, move them out of the way, disrupt their rhythm, and especially if it's a player that doesn't want to get hit much, then they're going to have a horrible day come third quarter. So last game of the day is A-Town against Illini Bluffs, and Illini Bluffs is legit, folks, and – uh, that might be the biggest deficit game. I mean, it has the potential to be that. A-Town struggling a little bit on the boys' side of things, I think. And Illini Bluffs is legit. I mean, if you don't out-physical them like Macomb did, they will run some scores up on you. Now, BPC, I, I say that. BPC was the one team they beat Illini Bluffs, and they kind of beat Illini Bluffs at their own game. They used their height and their length and their, their athletic ability to outplay Illini Bluffs in that game that actually ended up giving West Hancock the Spartan tip-off classic tournament, right? It would. And they took it away from Macomb by beating Illini Bluffs. So you look at that, I don't know that A-Town has that in their hip pocket like BPC does. So I think their their job at this point is to go in and just man try to manhandle as best you can Illini Bluffs and – Take them out of their game and hope hope something works in your favor that way. Ball security, slow down to a crawl. You know, that's going to be your best friend. You can't outgun a team like that that has you beat on speed and athleticism. But if you slow down, you know, just run a motion offense. I don't care if you sit there and hold the ball and pass it back between, you know, for five minutes straight. They're going to get tired playing defense, just spinning around 24-7 with screens. That's going to have to be your bread butter to beat that team. So that's going to be it. Again, 9 a.m. on Saturday, Ridgewood, Monmouth, Roseville, 10.30 a.m., West Weathersfield in Farmington, 12 p.m., Knoxville and Sierra Gordo, Bements. 1.30 is Rock Ridge and Columbia, 3 p.m., Southeastern and Fulton, 4.30 p.m., Macomb and Scales Mound. That's the one I'm really, I'm really looking forward to that game. A-Town girls against Macomb is at 6 p.m., and then A-Town boys versus Illini Bluffs. At 7:30, so that's our Saturday. Uh, Camp Point Central Southeastern girls play, but I believe it, it's. I had it down in Southeastern. I believe it's actually on the road. I got to talk to Kyle Rigg, uh, the AD at, at Southeastern, to verify that. But I believe that's. I believe I'm. I was mistaken on when that was, or where that was. So we look forward to next week, Kenny, and it and it slows down right because we're a little bit into the Christmas breaks. Teams are playing uh, Christmas games and so on and so forth. Monday, BPC has Rushville Industry at home. That'll be a game you cover, right? Mm -hmm. And then uh, Tuesday, we have Macomb Boys playing Peoria Christian. That'll be on TSSR Game Time Live presented by MDH. That's another game that Coach Anderson has talked all year about testing his squad and wanting his, his squad to get better and be tested and be ready for the for the conference season and the postseason. Peoria Christian is a team that made it to sectionals last year in Class 1A and bringing most everybody back. So that's another team that should be a really good test for the Macomb High Bombers. So they've had a lot of tests here down the street, stretch. Of course, they beat 
Mercer County by two on Tuesday night, or on Monday night, excuse me. And the thing about that is, is they had opened up a 12-point lead going into the fourth quarter, and Mercer County came screaming back and actually had a look at a pretty decent look at a three on a steal with about four seconds left and couldn't get it. It went off, back, off the backboard and off the back iron. Uh, no good by Jackson Long, and the Bombers held on for a win. But they have played some teams that have really put them in a position to be ready, I think, for the Macomb Western Holiday Tournament. I will tell you that next week uh, on Wednesday we'll have our TSSR weekly pro show from here at Sports Corner at 124, and we'll have the pairings. They're going to announce those, I think, Sunday, but we'll do a more in-depth look at the pairings for the Macomb Western Holiday Tournament. We'll also look at the uh, Midwest or Mississippi Valley Invitational Tournament that we'll hopefully have some games for from from Minden. So we'll look at a lot of that stuff on next Wednesday's show, so make sure you mark that down on your calendar. And then Wednesday, an odd a noon game, if my schedule was right that I saw, a noon game between Abington, Avon, and BPC at BPC. So, uh, of course, nobody's in school. Everybody's out of school. So Why not? Playing, you know? playing a little earlier. So we'll have <laughs> basketball in the afternoon and then have the show on Wednesday night here for TSSR Weekly live from the Sports Corner at 124 where we're at tonight in a little different location as we talked about. And then, we're other than the MVIT, we're pretty much done until after the new year. But once that new year starts... Yeah, I was uh, looking. Jan January 1st, 2nd, 3rd. Uh, yeah, so we start on the 2nd with A-Town Girls against Mercer County. Then we have three games on the 3rd, all boys, A-Town, Southeastern, and Macomb. And then on the 4th, we have two, which is Wednesday games, Southeastern and Camp Point, which is a big, a big rivalry game, right? Mm -hmm. And then uh, West Prairie and West Hancock is girls. Got to give a shout-out, speaking of that, Lauren Powell. They lost to... Uh, I'm drawing a blank, but they scored 43 points, and she had 38 of them for West Prairie. Lauren Powell signed. We talked about that. She signed, going to play basketball at Carl Sandburg next year uh, at, for the junior college there. But uh, congrats to her. She's one that's probably going to make it into that mm -hmm. athlete of the week talk as we move down the year. We That's something new. We haven't talked about uh, really openly, but we're going to start having – we haven't put it together yet. We're going to have a – all area team for football. We've got to put that together yet. And we're going to have an athletic banquet where we give awards for all area teams for TSSR Game Time Live. We'll have that in the spring, probably in May. It'll be here at Sports Corner at 124. Actually, the Macomb Dining Company next door. Same building and everything. But watch more for that. That's going to be a really fun, cool thing that I'm really excited about getting able to, being able to do as part of this. Make sure you pick up TSSR Bites, Tri-State Sports Report Bites. It's part of the Wednesday publication for the Community News Brief. We're happy to be working and partnering with them for that. Uh, a lot of great stuff coming. As I said, we're hoping to start adding some West Hancock games into the Mitch mix with, with I about said Kyle, Luke Little. Uh, I don't know where I got Kyle. I did the same thing to Lucas. You remember that? I Do you remember, don't know remember us sure. telling you about that? Lucas uh, worked for me at the racetrack, and the first two weeks or three weeks he helped me in the, with the series, I called him by the wrong name. I don't remember what the name was now, but I called him by the wrong name, and so I, I did the same thing with, <laughs> with Luke. And maybe that's the reason why, is because it's so close to Lucas, I didn't think it could be right. I, I don't know. Anyway, that's just me. I, I screw stuff up quite often. Right, Kenny? Yeah, probably. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I like how you said probably. You didn't just say yes. I appreciate that. So. Well, folks, thanks for joining us here on TSSR Weekly, live from Sports Corner at 124. A little late start, but we're happy we got it in. Great interview with Jalen Conley. Congratulations to him, and thanks for him for being the Tri-State Sports Report Athlete of the Week. Uh, and I guess uh, we'll be back tomorrow night, or I will be, with Macomb Liberty Basketball and then a whole bunch of basketball on Saturday. So for Kenny Suter, for everybody here at Sports Corner 20, 124, thanks for joining us on TSSR Weekly. We'll see you tomorrow night live from the hangar at Macomb High School.